Cardiac. Arrest! I don't even have atherosclerosis! Oh. So, we're on uh, topic 1.2 from this book. Oh yes. And it's all about more details about the heart. But first we talk about water. What's special about that? Yeah, well it's used as a transport medium for blood. And it has something very special about it. It has hydrogen bonds, yeah, which make it very special in a number of ways that are particularly useful for being a transport medium. Yeah, so if you've got a transport medium, you want it to be a liquid, so that's important. And you want to be able to dissolve things in it, because it transports stuff around, like hormones, sugars, all this stuff. So this is where it becomes useful. The hydrogen bond is between the lone pair of the oxygen and the hydrogen. Yeah, because this is especially negative and especially positive. If you do chemistry, you can count these a lot. If not, they're these, and these make a pretty switch. Yep. Stuff similar to it, of similar size, that don't have the hydrogen bonds, would be gaseous at yeah, our body temperature. Yes, and about that percent. wouldn't be very helpful. And also, because it can form hydrogen bonds, it makes things soluble in it. It does, yeah, it does all of stuff in it. So it's, it's a liquid. It's small, and it's sort of dissolves stuff, so that makes water pretty swish. And you need to know that now, but at uh, uh, A-level biology, you have to know. I don't know why it's so... It doesn't come up very often, but it does. It does. But uh, most of the chapter's not about that, it's about the heart. Yeah. So we've drawn a heart up. There we are. We're going to label it for you. We are, because you might, you might get something like this in the exam. It might be better drawn in the exam, but you'll have to be able to label it. So what's the first step when you get to this, way? Well, you need to know which side is the left-hand side and which side is the right-hand side because, you know, from your GCSE we have atrium and ventricles, you have to know which is the left and which is the right. So, how do we tell? Well, well if we got operating operating rain, so we'll be cutting up, it's like this. This is his left, so that's the left side, and this is his right. Right, so, brought him back to life, and now we're going to, we're going to, well, label it. I would start by putting left and right. That's a good idea. And I like to start from this side too and go all the way around. Yep. And so here is, remember these, I like to use a monomic. Ah, what's a monomic trip first? Well, that's when you have a, a sentence or a story that you remember, and every first letter is the same as the first letter of something on here. Mine makes no sense, it's terrible, you should have a different one. But everything, different stuff works to different people. Yes, so, I'll write it up. Okay. As it's in a German accent. Yeah. This one works for me and Triv because it's so bizarre and weird. That's why it works for us. You might be the sort of people who actually like to make a nice short story or a nice little poem or rhyme. But the first letter stands for the first letter of the stuff, as Triv said. So we've got all people probably are applicable. So viruses, real, I can't do it like Triv. Real brick. There it is. You've got to do it in that accent. All. <laughs> all. Probably soup vixen, which makes no sense to anyone whatsoever. It, it, none at all. But each of these letters are the right order of the things in clockwise from the top. So I'll go ahead and start labelling while Trip finishes that. We have all a aorta, which is this big thing. It's a big here. thing, and it's actually the main artery for most of your body. Yep. Um, has one part of it that goes. It comes out from here. Comes up from there, yeah. It has one part that is the upper body and another bit that comes at the bottom. So this is also the same thing. The lower body. But you need to know they're both part of the aorta. It's a big vessel and we'll talk about arteries after we've labelled this. Next it says people. Now uh, that's pulmonary artery. Yes. That that also comes out here. That that is connected to this. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. What that does is it sends blood to your lungs. That's something you need to know about arteries and veins. A lot of people think that arteries carry oxidated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood. That isn't actually the case. No. Arteries take stuff away from the heart and veins bring it back. It's that simple. Yeah, so pulmonary artery actually takes deoxygenated blood to the lungs so it can be oxygenated and brought back. And when it's brought back, that's in fact the next thing it is. Labeled. And that comes back through the pulmonary veins, which come back to the heart, but it's oxygenated because it's been to the lungs. Okay. Then we start the chambers. Oh, sorry, and this is also the oh, yeah. veins the, over the other side. Yeah, because it is, yeah, I've got two lungs, one on each side, sort of. Yeah, so each of both. Okay. Now into chambers. So you have A here, which is left a atrium. And that's why it's important to label your left and right. It is, because, but it's, it's not on the left, is it? It's on the right. But it is left. Yeah. 
And then next we have, I, I label the valve next, and that's, there's two names to this. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't have to be. But... I, I like to use atrioventricular valves, because that's the same for both of them, but they do have another name, it's called tricuspid and bicuspid, which are different. Atrioventricular. And uh, so which one is this, Wayne? Well, I'm not too sure, because I like to call it atrioventricular like you, but I think this side is the triple and this side is the double. Yeah, so we'd make this one, I check this. But this one might be tricuspid and this one might be bicuspid or vice yeah. versa. But this works for both, so I learned that one. I would advise you to learn that one, even though it's a bigger, scarier word. Yeah, and then I label next another valve, which is one a bit further up, and that's a semilunar valve. And it's the S. And that is what actually goes up to this. This is yeah. actually connected in here. Yeah, it comes from the left ventricle, which is next, and fires up. So that's what ne that's what's next, and that is the left ventricle, which are lower chamber. You should remember from GCSE that at the top you have the atria, there and there, and the bottom you have the ventricles, there and there. So down here we've said that's the... That's goes to the body, aorta. part of the aorta. So then we have something down there, and that's the inferior vena cava. Inferior. That's a, that's a big thing. Yep. Then we have the right ventricle. It can be quite hard to see in this particular diagram, but this is below this, even though it comes up here, it's actually below yeah, it. Yeah, it's below it. It's, a, it's weird to look at, at hearts in 2D because they're, they're not. If you ever, if you ever um, dissect one in the lab, it would be quite confusing. You might have to follow all the arteries and all the big vessels, but it's not, it's not flat. So a segment is a weird example to look at. Yeah. So that's the V's done with. Okay. Then probably, which means again, I've already labelled. There is our pulmonary veins. And then right at the top, we have superior vena cava. Now that's the big vein from the top of your body. Uh, this is quite a lot to remember. Yeah. Like I said, we just make them a nomic. But you don't always have to label a diagram. Sometimes you have to talk about the cycle of a heart. And you still need to talk about where all these vessels are. So there's a better way of learning this. Yes. And that's called the box method. So I forgot the name. Yeah, so we're going to take you through how to do that. Shall we do it on that side? I was just thinking... Hey, should we swap sides? Okay, swap sides. Right. So, so, you wouldn't draw this heart, you draw... You draw, yeah, because basically what the heart is, is it's a box. And there's a vessel here, here, chamber, sorry, chamber here, 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 and here. So it represents it like that. So that would be... The, the, we'll lay it up again, this would be the right-hand side, this yeah. would be the left. And then the atriums are on the top, so these are your atria, yeah. these are your ventricles. And then you just sort of put the bits to stick out on. Yeah. So, coming out up here, this aorta, yeah. I'm trying to, try to draw it coming yeah, in here. Yeah, it goes under pulmonary artery. It comes from the left ventricle. So you do it from there and it would cut off. Sort out like that, something like that. And that's your aorta, and then you go down and you've got the pulmonary veins coming in here. Pulmonary artery coming out of this one and stuff going into this, and you label it all, and then you, you draw your valves like this. Yeah. Like this, like that. And one in the middle. Be that over there. But yeah, and then you can. This is much easier to label, much quicker to do if you're not and drawing a big heart. Yeah, it's just much faster. I don't want to label time. it again because we've just, we, we've, we've just labeled it, but but you get the idea. You draw a box, you draw the vessels on. It's a lot quicker. Um, as always with biology, though. Spelling. Yes, that's spell. something you need to check everything. They do, there's a mark for spelling. If you don't spell it right, you won't get a mark at all. And uh, that's the heart and its structure. Let's go on to uh, the stuff after it. Yeah, Maybe which is uh, the vessels and stuff like that. Let's crack on. Okay. Vessels. So, when what they? Well, we spoke about in uh, video one, which was topic 1.1. We have a closed system. We do, it's closed. And that means everything's contained, all the blood is contained. Yeah, and it's contained in vessels. And that's what they are, they just contain the blood. Yeah, and they sort of are the roads for all your, all your stuff. So there's, there's three names, we'll go for the first two that you should be familiar with, that you now have to know in a bit more detail. Yeah, you have arteries and veins, like before you have to be able to draw on a diagram of them, so... We'll do that now. We'll do that. Arteries outside, veins inside. Okay. Alright, so... Arteries. Out. Oh dear. So, yeah, you can. So, like before, we need to know a, a diagram, 
and in the cross section, the cross section of a tube is, it's a circle. It has quite a lot of layers. Yep. Lots of layers, and we'll talk about that a bit later. It's not an onion. So, right in the middle, we work in the middle, go outwards, we have the lumen. Very, very small in an artery. It is very small, and this is where the blood actually occupies, it's where it goes through. And the lumen is surrounded by a little, a little um, layer, which is called the endothelium. Now, I just say this little bit is one cell thick, but we'll go on to why later. Also, biology likes spelling. Yep. Lumen's not hard. This one, I like to think of end, opt, helium. Yep. So you need to spell these things. And then we have this big area, and it's all, well, we're going to it in, but it's all muscular tissue. So why does it need all that, Wayne? Well, if you want to write that down. Okay. If you think about it, the arteries take blood away from the heart, so that's when the heart's pumped. So it deals with very, very high pressure. All of this, it doesn't carry any blood, just the centre does. So when that pumps with very high pressure, it expands a little bit. And then snaps back. And that's called elastic recoil. It is. And if it didn't have as much of this muscular tissue, when it expanded, rather than recoiling, it would just snap it, it would cause internal bleeding. Or or lots of and this can happen anyway with... Um, Atherosclerosis a bit later on. Yeah, when you get increased pressure above what it should be, it still can't deal with it. Yeah, that's why high blood pressure is bad. Then there's one more layer. This outer layer, very thin layer. Yep. Collagen. Collagen. And it's a double L, A, G, E, N. And that's the connective tissue. Yeah, that's basically. The tissue This fibers. keeps going outwards. Yeah. It keeps it all together, basically. So. Makes it maintain the shape of um, a tube. So. That's arteries. Yep. Now it's veins. Okay, so it's another circle. But uh, you need to know the differences. Although some of the names are the same, you still need to know the differences between the artery and the vein. Right. So this, this hole in the middle, this is the lumen, just like this side. Except it's much, much bigger. It's huge. Yeah, why is that, one? Well, it doesn't deal with the blood under the high pressure, so it doesn't need to be nice and tight. And also, it has something called valves. It does, we're going to do a bit later, but like you said, here, this very thin muscular tissue. Yep, I showed it in red, I forgot. So, just like this one, it's the muscular tissue. It does have a little bit of elastic, but just not very much because it doesn't need it. Yeah. So it's very, very tiny, it's mostly muscular. And then the next layer is called the same thing, and it's the, the same thing. thing. Yeah, it's just because it's much bigger lumen, there's much bigger circumference. Yeah, but it's the same thickness, and it's in fact it's only one cell thick in both of them. Yeah, and we'll be up to smaller vessels, you'll find out why. So, yeah, smaller vessels, it... No, we need valves first. Valves, we'll do valves. We'll mention, we mentioned this is a big lumen, partly because it's not the high pressure, but mostly because it can contain valves, or needs to be. Yeah, so it needs to have quite a big area. So, valves, what do they do, eh? Well, if this, is the, if this is the vein, a straight tube going upwards, on either side of it will be skeletal muscles, and these come pressed together, much like squeezing a toothpaste tube, pushes the blood upwards, boom, that's a valve, that prevents the backflow. Yeah. Then that happens again, so it pushes the blood up, and it stops again there. So on. And this keeps happening, and that's how blood's moved in the veins, because it's under a very low pressure, it needs skeletal muscles to sort of push them all through. And likewise, this doesn't because it has the heart's high pressure, this artery, so it doesn't need valves. Yeah. And like I thought, this one also has the, uh, the collagen, collagen layer the outside. So, another, I said there was three that you're familiar with. We've done the main two. There's yeah. also something called... Capillaries, and that's like you have heard of GCC. And, well, they're just, they're just the endothelium bit. And this is one cell thick. And this helps quite a lot, but why? Well, if you imagine, because these are all tubes, it's useful for transporting it, but then what, what can you do with it? You can't get any oxygen or anything out through these walls. No, they're too thick. And every cell in your body needs energy. So it diffuses through these capillaries, because yeah. it's only one cell thick, it's not very far for the gases to travel. Likewise, CO2 goes back in with yeah. the capillaries. This happens much faster over a smaller distance, something we mentioned about thick law. And we actually go on to that a little bit more later on in the course. Yeah. But very thin, does the diffusion, that's where it all happens. It is. But it doesn't just jump straight out of there and go into here. You can imagine that would, these are only small, high pressure. They would just rupture them really bad. So, you go to little arteries, and these are called 
arterioles. Arterioles. Which are like these, but just much smaller. So it goes from the arteries yep. into that. And into then, the it doesn't go straight from the capillaries into veins, it just trickles on the bottom and it, that wouldn't be very good. So it goes to little veins called venules. And like always, biology needs to know how to spell these things. Yeah, learn it. Yeah. And that's that, really. These are the things you need to know, the detail you need to know, and the comparisons you need to know. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. So, so now we move on to the cardiac, cardiac cycle. cycle. Cardiac cycle. And that's what we're on to now. Yeah. Cardiac cycle. Yeah. So. What is it? Essentially, it's the process of what happens in a heartbeat. Yeah, well, when, when your heart beats, it goes through different chambers and then goes around your body and your lungs and all that jazz. But yeah, when, when it goes, dum -dum, you need to know what happens. So we have these two things called systole and diastole. Yeah, you should remember from GCSE, systole is contraction and diastole is relaxing. There's two types of systole followed by a diastole yeah, in the cardiac cycle. So, if we uh, are we do like diagrams, yeah, we'll do brief diagrams. All right, we'll start with the uh, atrial systole. Okay. In fact, because it's a cycle, you could really start. You could start, start anywhere because it goes around the cycle. But yeah, I mentioned before, systole is contraction, contracting atrial. This is to do with the atria. So this is when the blood goes from there into the ventricles. So if we draw the simple box or a box, these are atrium. They are they. The ventricle. And you're drawing diastole before this, they fill with blood. And this is like you need to know that as well. And then in systole they go... So by this stage, they are filled with blood. They've got lots of blood in them. In the atrium. And then... These walls sort of contract. They do. Make them smaller, which makes the pressure higher, which pushes them out. So they flow down. And there's valves. Into... Sorry, Trev. Oh, it's okay. Into the ventricles. And you should see, or know from the structure of the heart, these are atrioventricular valves that it's going to force open. Yeah, and then they, then they close. And when they close, that's actually what makes the thump. It is, that's the first thump. Yeah. Which is something that's actually in the book you might have to actually know. Yeah. The characteristic sound of the heart is the valves, the valves closing. So once they've closed, then it needs to go further. So we get to ventricular system. And that immediately follows. It does it straight after, that's why it's dum dum. This it is really fast. And then the gap is just diastole. But yeah, uh, as we we're saying, so this is when the ventricles are full of blood because they've just been pushed into from the atria. So they're all full of blood. And then they want to fire around the body and the lungs. Yep, so these these sort of contract sort of like this. And then they go boop out. They fly out. Um, one sort of goes up, mentioned before, to the aorta, and there's valves in the middle. Yeah. These close again, these are called the semilunar valves. And when they close, that causes the second characteristic heartbeat. Yeah. So, that side goes to the lungs, that side goes to the body, but basically, that's what happens when the arteries fill. Yeah. And then off goes the blood, so it's followed by... Diastole. And this is when the heart relaxes and blood, they, they say it trickles, it's a bit faster than that, trickles into the atria. So this is starting to come in, but it's not yet at this it's stage, not yet when it's at that stage. Also, um, they are quite open here, and these are quite open here, and also they're under low pressure, and these are under high pressure at these points. In so these would be under low pressure at this yeah. stage. And that's, that's the cardiac cycle. And this happens really, really, really quickly. It does, and all the time. Constantly. If you didn't, you'd die. And that's that. I need to know what it is, I need to understand it. And that brings us to the end of part one of this video. It does, and part two will be going on to an actual CHD. Yeah, which is called Atlas So we should go on to that. Yeah, we'll see you at part two. Let's crack on. Roll the credits.